the Kent True Veil. This will be my third video in a row on this bike. I don't think I've ever done that before, but the True Veil, pretty special. And there are a lot of questions. I'm going to answer a couple of extra ones in this video, but I want to mention I have two videos out. The first of which is my base review. The second is called The Good, The Bad, and The Geo. Cover all the geometry specs, or at least most of them. There are a couple that were left out. I'm going to mention those in this video. But also, I talked about a couple of things I didn't like, including this, this stem, stem bolt. If you watch that video, you'll know this lower. This is upside down, so that's the lower. But that is stripped out, and there were a couple of other little minor things that I didn't like that it's an oddly sized for a medium frame, 16 and a quarter inch. But one of the things that people were asking about after that video, after the specs video, is this head tube. I wanted to clarify a couple of things. Number one, the specs told me this was 108 millimeters. I said I rounded it up because most head tubes are 110, 115, it's usually what I see measured. But I put some calipers on this, and with the cups in, the lower and the upper cup, it's 108 millimeters. So note that if that means anything to anyone, cup to cup, it's 108 millimeters, just like the spec set. A more pressing question is what cup goes in this lower headset? Because on bikes like the Boundary, the Axome, it's a ZS56. Well, I have taken the cup out. I have my calipers here. So let's just measure this. See if I can do this on camera so you can see it. See that? That is 55. So this is a ZS55 lower headset cup that will go on the Truvel. Now, just for comparison's sake, so there's the cup that I just measured at 55. Here is the cup out of an axle. And you can see that's 56. So that's a ZS56 on the axle. Of course, this is not the axle. This the lower headset cup. If you're going to replace it, put in a tapered fork. You need a ZS55. Next, the seat post. People are asking if I made a mistake and I meant to say 30.9 for this seat post. No, it's 30.4. It's etched right onto the seat post. I thought I showed that on camera. But 30.4 is the seat post diameter. So if you want a dropper, it's a 27.2. It's going to be the easiest route, a 27.2 with a shim to adapt it to the 30.4. Well, how about running an internal cable for a dropper? People have asked, and I think I showed this. There's actually a hole up in here for this seat tube. It goes into the bottom bracket, but there's no hole going into this tube. Of course, this has internal cable routing that comes out, this hole in the bottom. So people were asking, running, running a cable down and then maybe into here and out that hole. Well, it doesn't work like that because remember, this has a cartridge style bottom bracket. That cartridge takes up pretty much all the room. So there's no way that you could fit a cable in through here. Plus, if you drill the hole here, it would be down and quick and a quick, sharp turn. So that is out. Now I have thought up a potential workaround for this or two potential workarounds for this. One theory is to take these cables out and that seat tube, you can kind of see it if I look. Well, you can't, but I can. The seat tube can be technically accessed for there. And I'm thinking maybe if I did some spectacular drilling work and didn't eat all this up, that I might could start with a small hole and kind of get past the bottom bracket and somehow bore out a hole large enough for a cable to come out that seat tube and come out here. And then I could use, and I, I have some, some adhesive cable clips that I could work down the tube and run the dropper post that way. My second plan would be to drill a hole on the back of the seat tube, way down low. And then, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a little hole here run the cable through that hole and around and then run my adhesive strips up and route it that way. My only concern there, there is a certain degree bend that you can have in a cable housing with the cable inside it before it starts causing problems. And I'm scared that would be too sharp of a bend. So I'm going to ask the local bike shop. They would know how much bend I can have here and not affect function. And if that works, maybe the back side of this tube would be a lot easier coming out and curving around. I don't know if you have any, any experience with that. Maybe comment. See what you think there. Otherwise, 
I mean, I could do it on this side, ugly, and maybe try to bore it to do a port, a proper port, and then route it. But either way, that's not ideal, or either way. Thinking back here or there, but just looking at this, now that I'm really looking, that bottom bracket curves inside there. There's very, not very much room to access that inner tube, inner tube wall. So I don't know. But anyway, I'm sharing that. You can't use an internal. You can't use a cable inside here and then bore it and come out. That will not work for sure because of the cartridge style bottom bracket. So that's it on the bottom bracket and internal dropper cabling. For this part, I've had to use some adaptive visual aids, meaning I got a metal broom handle, a magnetic level, and another level. And I'm trying to represent here stack and reach. Stack would be, you can't see this, let me move it down, might be a little loud here. But stack is from the middle of the bottom bracket up to the center line from the top of the head tube. So the lower side of this metal broom handle is right on the line with the top of the head tube. And that's measured, get this back up, that's measured from the center of the center line of the head tube. Some people go to the back edge here, but it's supposed to be, and I've, I've always done it this way, now I've been told this is the way it is, through the center line of the head tube because that goes with the angle of the head tube and then it goes vertically straight up. So I invisibly drew a line there in my head and that's where the edge, right on the inside of that tape is, there on the front. So that will be our reach from this stack line from the bottom bracket to right here. Right at that point, now you see I'm gingerly touching because this, uh, this is my third take. This has started coming apart, so I've got to be fast here. So first I'm going to measure from the bottom bracket, center of the bottom bracket, right to this bottom point right there. Oh, hope I don't knock anything over. So let me try this and I'll see what I get. Okay, and the bike is on level ground. Let me mention that. Level ground, and I'm using levels to make sure everything's straight. Center of the bottom bracket to here. 62.2 centimeters. Reach is 44.2 centimeters, so effectively 42 centimeters. That's your reach and stack, and you have all the other geo specs. I don't think there's anything I've left out. If there is, comment below and let me know. And also, let me know if this info helps you out. Remember, head tube size for that lower cup, ZS55. Thanks for watching Kev Central. Lots more bike stuff coming. You know, it's funny. I've had e-bikes and I still have, I think, three e-bikes in possession that I haven't reviewed yet or that you haven't seen the review of. But now I'm getting some standard bikes now that it's we've hit peak humidity here in Alabama. But I have more, lots more stuff coming. So make sure you're subscribed, comment below, give this a thumbs up, all that stuff. Thanks for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.